After years of waiting, Unreal Engine 5 is finally here. We actually have a pretty decent roster of full games to look at, beyond the tech demos and samples that we had in the past. Some of the early results have been sort of mixed, with other titles demonstrating UE5's merits more convincingly. But there's one question that hasn't been answered quite as well so far. How do these technologies scale to console systems? So today we'll be looking at the current state of Unreal Engine 5 on the consoles to evaluate how the technology fares in early game efforts. I think the key takeaway from my experiences with Unreal Engine 5 so far is that the core feature set basically works. Lumen GI solves indirect lighting in real time to a high degree of fidelity, producing great looking shading in most circumstances, if set up correctly. Lumen reflections similarly help to light glossy and semi-gloss surfaces correctly, giving them good looking reflective detail. Virtual shadow maps overcome the limitations of cascaded shadow map techniques to deliver super fine shadow detail, with accurate variable penumbra in some cases. And Nanite delivers high quality meshes with a continuous level of detail system that simplifies asset production and prevents LOD popping. In the few games where these techniques are combined effectively, we do see a pretty tremendous uplift in visual quality relative to games on Unreal Engine 4. The lighting detail in UE5 titles is superb, even in games that are only making use of software lumen, which isn't using hardware ray tracing. You get lots of fine indirect lighting, reflections, and shadows, with each technique showing fidelity that wouldn't really be easily replicable in a last generation game. In broad strokes, the tech works, but when we do an in-depth look at some of the console versions of these games, the results can be a bit more mixed at times. We're going to look at PS5 and Series X first, before moving on to Series S in a later section. Fort Solus is a good example. The game's Lumen GI is doing some really cool stuff here. Look at how this dining area floods with subtle illumination once the lights turn on, for instance, or how we get real-time bounce lighting from the player's flashlight. But there are other instances, like with the moving red light in this scene, or with the lighting in this scene, where we get a lot of breakup and artifacting in the Lumen GI, which isn't its software guys here. I think this shows the importance of getting these techniques implemented well, which could involve changing lighting arrangements, removing emissive lights, or adding more direct lighting to the scene. You could also simply increase the amount of rays shot into the scene per pixel. We can see the flip side of this problem when we put the game into performance mode, where the breakup and shimmer become a much greater problem. Increasing the ray count or shifting the game into the more expensive hardware RT implementation of Lumen could be beyond the capabilities of the console though, depending on the game. The PC version of Fort Solus certainly looks much better when modified to support hardware ray tracing, but that might have proven too expensive on PS5. The Talos Principle 2 is another recent UE5 title that shows off some of the potential issues with UE5 on consoles. There's some stuff that's pretty cool here, like super fine shadow detail courtesy of UE5's virtual shadow map system. The nanite geometry is also very dense and doesn't present with any LOD popping or anything like that. Lumen reflections though seem to have been omitted, perhaps as a consequence of targeting consoles, though these reflections can be enabled on PC. Probably the biggest issues are related to the Lumen GI once again. The GI treatment can look pretty terrific here, with a beautiful representation of indirect illumination that is a real standout. But there are problems, like how the foliage is badly over darkened. Some of the lighting on consoles suffers from obvious breakup in some moments as well, with a spotty appearance. In the absence of more powerful console hardware, you will see some of these lighting issues in indirectly lit areas across titles that use software Lumen. Immortals of Avium presents certain Lumen lighting issues as well, mostly related to that over darkening issue with software Lumen. The coarseness of the SDFs gives us some very dark shade on the roots here, though with less fine geometry the results are excellent, 
And when we fire our spells at the wall, you see a crude, speckled impression of the light on the ceiling. The results here are mostly decent, but indirectly illuminated scenes do expose some issues. With these games, I think we see some of the practical limits of Unreal Engine 5 techniques on consoles. Their power constraints necessitate certain compromises for performance, which PC hardware is sometimes able to overcome when given access to higher settings options. I think Robocop is probably the best adjusted of the recent UE5 crop on consoles. The lighting just looks superb here, and any lumen issues are kept to a minimum. Typically, you have to go out of your way to find them. The game also looks great in its 60fps targeting mode, even with a visibly lower ray count for Lumen GI. And we get solid lumen reflections here too. There are ways to get really great results out of these techniques even if you don't have a lot of hardware power on tap, though it does seem to require some careful artist work. Juza is another really interesting and well-designed recent UE5 game that's worth highlighting as well. The game uses very low detail textures, so a lot of the color variation in the image comes from indirect lighting. Light bounces through spaces and pools in crevices, with some terrific looking imagery as a result. Software Lumen's exaggerations work pretty well in this context, I think, given the more stylized art. Virtual shadow maps are highlighted effectively here as well, lending pin sharp and highly detailed shadows to even the most minor geometric elements. For a quick look at what the hardware RT path for UE5 may look like on the consoles, we need to take a trip back to 2021's The Matrix Awakens demo. The Lumen indirect lighting detail looks great here, and mostly resolves without visible noise. Reflections are the real standout here though, as tracing against triangles allows them to closely approximate the scene in a way that really can't be replicated with software Lumen. Visual quality is only half the story here though. So what about performance? With the 30 FPS targeting games using UE5, frame rates tend to be quite consistent. Robocop does throw up some drops in very intense action, but otherwise there aren't really any issues. At 60 FPS, there's a bit of a spectrum. Jusson is nearly perfect with very occasional one-off drops that look like traversal stutters, but it otherwise maintains a stable 60 FPS. On the flip side, you have a game like Immortals of Avium, which is usually sub-60, or a game like Lords of the Fallen, which suffers from profound stuttering issues. It's not totally clear what to chuck up to UE5 though. For instance, Immortals of Avium actually runs a lot better on Series S than Series X, albeit at a much lower resolution, suggesting that the issues are primarily GPU related. Just setting the game to a lower resolution would likely clean up most of the issues that we're seeing here. The same is likely true for Robocop, which drops down pretty hard during some more intense battles, but exhibits decent CPU performance on PC. I would much prefer the developers of these games set a more conservative resolution target, instead of presenting a variable performance level. Other issues, like the traversal stutters we see in many UE5 games, seem more closely linked to the engine technology. These may be hard to overcome, but achieving a generally good performance level on consoles using UE5 seems entirely possible, judging from the results in these early titles. I think the other side of the console question is how well games scale to Series S. I've been showcasing Series X and PS5 so far because those offer the canonical current gen experiences, but UE5 games do need to scale to Microsoft's 4 teraflop cut price console as well, with all the difficulties that entails. It's far weaker in GPU power than any other current gen console, and has a cutback memory arrangement as well. We see a few approaches here. One option is to simply omit certain features that won't run well. The Talos Principle 2 excises Lumen GI on Series S, for instance, which dramatically degrades the game's lighting presentation. We don't get the beautiful occlusion and dramatic bounce that we see on Series X in its quality mode. The developers of the Talos Principle 2 have actually built a non-Lumen lighting pipeline for Series S and lower-end PCs, and the other consoles in their performance modes using simple fill lights to mimic global illumination, along with ambient occlusion. 
but the results are far from the Lumen-driven presentation on higher-end systems. That also means that there's no Lumen GI fallback for reflections on Series S when the SSR is occluded. Likewise in Robocop, where Lumen reflections are cut on Series S. The SDF-based reflections here are absent on the Series S, which creates some issues with occlusion and produces a less accurate material response on glossy and semi-gloss surfaces. Fortunately, the Lumen GI is retained here on the S, which is definitely the more important of the two techniques in this game, although it has to manage with fewer rays. The other approach is to retain those major UE5 visual features on Series S, and just to grade their appearance as necessary to keep performance in check. Jusson takes this path, lowering the resolution of virtual shadow maps somewhat, with more visible stair-stepping, and slightly decreasing the fidelity of the Lumen GI. The Matrix Awakens is another good example here. It definitely has a lot of nips and tucks on Series S if you look side by side, but you do retain all the key UE5 features, just with an obvious decrease in fidelity and running at a much lower rendering resolution. This may prove the more difficult approach though, especially if RAM constraints are a factor. So far, I think UE5 games have actually scaled reasonably well to the Series S. There are obvious cuts, but I think the system, for the most part, preserves the essential visual character of the higher-end console versions of these games. The only exception in the games I've tested would be the Talos Principle 2, which looks almost generationally different at times because of the degraded lighting setup on Series S. Retaining Lumen GI is going to be critical here, I think, for most games. Performance-wise, the results are mostly similar to the higher-end consoles. Jusson runs about the same as its Series X counterpart, while the Talos Principle runs slightly worse. Immortals of Avium actually runs a lot better, with a pretty solid 60fps update, though this comes with a very low resolution as a trade-off. Robocop only has a 30fps mode on Series S, and it does suffer from more frequent FPS dips, though it retains a reasonable resolution. I'm not seeing huge cause for concern on the performance front on Series S, though in terms of visual features, the outcomes are more mixed. Upsampling is critical to maintaining good performance in UE5. The engine's key features scale directly with rendering resolution, so high base resolutions are going to be out of the question for a lot of UE5 efforts. To compensate on consoles, most developers are going to use one of two upsampling techniques, FSR2 or TSR, which are both supported in UE5 for console use. Robocop's PC build supports both, so let's take a quick look here and see what might work best for console use. I'm doing a pretty heavy upscale, from 720p to 1440p, as a demanding but still realistic upsampling scenario. In stills, both techniques do an okay job, though you can note some additional breakup with FSR2 in a few places in the image. But when actually moving through the game world, there's a pretty stark difference in favor of the TSR technique here. Neither is producing an aliasing free image, mind you, but the TSR is a lot cleaner in typical play. This is magnified when we do a simple horizontal pan without any motion blur. FSR2 has a super aliased, highly noisy image under this kind of camera movement, while TSR keeps shimmer pretty much under control, without obtrusive artifacting. Performance-wise, TSR actually slightly outperforms FSR2 here, clocking in with a small advantage at 1440p output in performance mode, and also maintaining a small performance edge at 4K in quality mode. Now these techniques can vary in quality a little bit from title to title, so this shouldn't be taken as a dispositive verdict on the relative merits of the two techniques, but it certainly seems like TSR may be the better choice on consoles. Even with a pretty heavy upscale factor here, it's producing a perfectly good looking final image, one that would hold up decently from a typical viewing distance on a 4K display. Ultimately, I think we are seeing some mostly positive indications from UE5 in console games. The core graphical tech clearly scales well to console hardware, delivering some really impressive visual results in problem areas for real-time rendering. A game like Robocop is delivering top-tier console visuals with the help of UE5, for instance. 
On the performance front, some games do struggle, though in some cases this seems to be more at the hands of the developer than the UE5 tools. Performance in future games will prove more interesting. This early crop of titles mostly consists of lower budget and somewhat less ambitious fare, which is perfectly fine of course, but we haven't seen a lot of big budget AAA efforts to really stress the engine tech. Can a game that features super detailed nanite meshes and intricate character models hit a solid frame rate on consoles? Will big budget games sidestep or overcome the traversal stutter issues often associated with Unreal? And can they achieve good looking visuals on Series S while retaining key UE5 tech? I don't think we have good answers to those questions, but they should be forthcoming over the next year or two. So Unreal Engine 5 is clearly demanding, but it can absolutely run effectively on the consoles. How well it fares in big future games is less obvious. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content. And to get in touch, use social media. Thanks for watching.